You know the vibes. We're back for another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast presented by NBA 2K22. BJ's back in regular settings, back home in LA. But BJ, I got to say, you're looking mighty fresh in that. What brand is that you're wearing? What's that you're flexing uh, in today? You see it. You see it. The uh-huh. Hoop Genius. You see it. Uh-huh. You see it. I got to represent my people. Oh out in my second home, you know, London. <laughs> That's my second home. You know what I'm saying? All the way from Detroit to London. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're talking about. That's, That's what we're talking good. about. You know, I had a couple of people step up to me. They say, yo, what's that? Mm-hmm. So, you know, just a little something, something. You know, yeah, we work UK, just a little something, something. We work, we work. Well, I'm in Boston, uh, ready for game six of the NBA Finals. I'm in a hotel room uh, where the shower doesn't work. So I'm hoping to change that by the morning or it's going to be a very awkwardly smelling game six. But it could be a very awkward game six if Golden State win. You know, BJ, we were here in Boston for games three and four, and the atmosphere was crazy, right? The fans were all crazy right, outside. Right. Like, even on non-game days, they were all excited. Everyone's in jerseys. This time around, I've not really seen many jerseys, and people are a little bit nervous. I don't know if that's because the golf is going on at the same time, and everyone's over at the golf. And today was baseball, Red Sox, in some sort of final at Fenway. So I think that's got the spotlight. We'll see tomorrow. But going into game six now, we've talked about the keys of the game and all of that. What is your, I'm not even going to ask you for a prediction, but what, what should we be looking out for for game six? What should we be looking out for? Well, the first thing is we want to look out for the Boston Celtics to come out with a sense of urgency. That's the first thing. Second, turnovers. Third, turnovers. And there's a fourth team. Fourth thing we should be looking out for, turnovers. Yep. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this more. I'm going to go out on a limb. Whoever wins game six is going to win the series. Shock. <laughs> this is the most shocking prediction ever. Okay. Um, Whoever wins game six is going to win the series. Now, as crazy as this sounds, Mo, with all of the turnovers and the missed free throws and all of those things, Here's the most, here's the craziest things ever. Now, I've, I've, I've been here, I started watching the games over again just to kind of replay them, and I was working out, and I, the game was on. So I just started watching them, and it was, it was great because they, they cut out all the commercials. Awesome. Games, and, yeah, in games four and games five, as bad as they played, they still had a chance to win this game. They should win have won both them. games. Yeah. yeah, you know, this is, this is what, like, you know, it's quick, you know, how quickly do we forget? I mean, Steph Curry was simply incredible at game four. And the Celtics still had a chance. Should have won. As bad as they played in game five, they still had a chance. And should have won that. So if they can limit the turnovers, they missed 10 free throws in the last game. Certainly, that's too difficult to overcome. Yep. I don't and think they they're going to get 10. a better chance. I don't think they're going to get a better chance, at least on paper. It's kind of like my my mind is saying the Celtics, but my heart is saying, you know what, the Warriors are going to be tough, you know, because yeah, well, the Warriors, well, they're, 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 they're experienced, you know. My but, heart is saying the Celtics, yeah, but my mind yeah, is saying know, the Warriors. For sure. So for Golden yeah. State then, what's the key to closing out a series? The, the most difficult game. They're yep. going to have to get uh, closing out. Finals, they're going to have to get multiple contributions from a lot of different areas, right? You know what I mean. There's going to have to. This isn't going to be like just one player, whether it's Steph. You know, we talk about you know what game six Clay. They're going to need someone to step up in the first half, someone to step up in the second half, and they're going to need an unlikely person to step up and have like one of those. The Jordan game Poole, of his life, you know. 20 points. Yeah, yeah. Points Remember how bench. Derek Derek White had like 18 in game one, right? Or something like that. Yeah, you know, they're gonna yeah. need something like that. So yeah. this is a Found difficult gold. game. The, the this is any player will tell you, any coach will tell you this will be the most difficult task, unless the Celtics just lay it egg, lay an egg. And I don't expect them to do that. Uh, well, if the Celtics do win, we'll be headed back to Golden State for oh, wow. Game Seven. How are you um, doing, man? How 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 are you? I mean, you you're back on the East Coast. Yep. And but I'm until like until tomorrow. Yeah, I'm back on the East Coast. I'm, I'm, gonna, be, I'm gonna keep you on you know, with you. Yeah, I've never believe, felt you're, worse. 
Yeah, that's what you, you, so you, it's not yeah. even that, right? I've come here and I checked into. I think I'm allergic to this hotel room. Like I'm allergic to this hotel room, right? Last night I was woke up every 45 minutes or so just coughing. But every time I go outside, I'm perfectly fine. It's just whenever I'm inside this room. So I went to the reception. Right. I'm like, can I change rooms? They're like, no, we're fully booked out. You can't change the room. So then I'm looking online for other hotels, and every hotel in town is booked because of the baseball and the golf US Open that's right. on all at the same time. So I'm stuck in this room, barely able to breathe, shower not working. I'm changing rooms tomorrow, but I'm just seeing if I can survive till tomorrow. You must After have had all. my room. That's, that was my room for uh, games three and four. Oh man, this is the worst. This is the worst. And I mean, it's a blessing to be here. Yeah, what can you do? But at the same time. But you say you're grinding right now, Mo. Hey, this is and, the then, and then, you know what, as my wife would say, poor you. You have to go to the to NBA me. finals, Mo. Mo, you have to go to the NBA finals. I mean, I'm not uh, complaining you know, about that uh, part. I mean, I would just like to be able to breathe while I sleep. I mean, that, that's just what I but but you know, it's it's yeah. not just the NBA finals like you know. We've got maybe one game left of the season, maybe two games left of the season. We have a trade, BJ. We have the first trade of the summer, yeah. if you're gonna call it. So it hasn't been, it can't actually go through until draft night. But the Houston Rockets are trading Christian Wood to Dallas. For the 26th pick in the upcoming draft, Boban Marjanovic, Trey Burke, and Marquise Chris. What do you make of this trade? Well, uh, most of these trades now more are transactions, right? Yeah. Just looking at numbers. So the Houston Rockets, they they moved off of that salary. That's what they did. And I think the Dallas Mavericks are saying we've upgraded our talent level. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, we move on. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, it works for everyone. It, unfortunately, you have to say this, but it works for everyone economically, how you're looking at the deal. Yep. You, we know what the Houston Rockets are doing, okay? Clearly, they can't say it, but I'll tell you this. They are they're looking at it going, we're two years away before we want to even start trying to mm -hmm. you know, put a team out there that possibly could win. And they still got John Wall's salary. The way they rebuild. Yes. So let's let's just call it what it is. They're going to go through another draft. They'll probably go through a draft after this, and then in in, in year three or you four, year four, they're going to want to start winning. You yeah. Know, so building around Jalen Green. I'll tell you what, though, who is the winner of this trade, in my opinion, is whoever they pick because they've got the third pick in the NBA draft, right? Right. So whoever gets picked, I'm assuming it's going to be Paolo Banchero. Assuming Jabari Smith and, and Chet well, Holmgren. It, it looks like they're moving off of bigs. Yeah, it looks like they're yeah. moving off the bigs. So they want to free up minutes, not only for him, though, but for Shengun as well, who had an impressive start to his career. Yeah, I think they're going to – so it, it's clear. It, you know, it, it, it's clear what it is. And you know what? Unfortunately, this is this I think is it's the a, new NBA. It's a win yeah, for, for Houston, uh, for Dallas, though, because they've got, a, like, a player who's going to feature heavily in their rotation in exchange for guys that – didn't get minutes in the playoffs. And it's going to be it. interesting. It's going to be interesting to see if he will be featured heavily in their rotation. Why do I say that? It's because now you're looking for excellent role players who can play without the ball. And mm -hmm. unless I'm missing something here, I don't think Christian Wood is a player that plays and contributes to the game without the ball in his hand. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how this works long term. I even think short term. I, I, I like well, the he's, talent. He's an upgrade. expiring contract as well. For only 14 yeah, million. That's what I'm saying. I, I like the talent. I think if it works, great. If it doesn't work, we move off of it, move on, yep. and we go from there. But I don't see him contributing and 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 complimenting Luka Doncic, right? Because you need shot blockers, defenders, rim protectors, and that's not what he does. He's a really good player, though. I'd be interested to see, though, if Jason Kidd and this Dallas defensive system can make him improve as a defender. Because we've seen You these... are who you are, Mo, at this point. You're not, you're not changing at this. Yeah. You are who you are. You are who you are. I know we love this player development and everyone wants to, but you are who you are. You know what I mean? It's not like you're a 40-point scorer in high school or college and then suddenly you come to the NBA and you start learning how to be a complimentary player. No, you are who you are. And, you know, and, and that's OK, you know, just because it doesn't fit there doesn't mean that he's not an NBA player. It's just that you got to find the right fit for you. So looking at this, 
I, I was kind of surprised with the move. I thought that Dallas would go for maybe a more defensive-minded pick to put behind Luka Doncic. It gives them more flexibility with Dwight Powell or perhaps a Maxi Cleaver. It's it's kind of an awkward fit because Tristan Woods, he can't really play the four on defense, but I don't know about him playing the five. So I don't know. I just think more trades are going to unfold. I think it's going to be a busy draft night in terms of the trades. Um, and then John Wall is obviously still on the Houston books. Do you think he finds a new home this summer? I think there will be interest for him because he has an expiring contract. as well. He has one year, I believe, remaining. So I could see someone wanting to take on that contract for a year to move off of it. But, you know, yeah. that's, the, that's the NBA. I don't look, $47 million. In the end, what he's going to – what John Wall is going to be faced with, is with the following is a buyout. That's a big number to be one of because it's clear he's no. exactly, exactly. So it just is what it is. Like I, I just ignore these things now because you know what, Mo? This is it's a it's 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 when you don't agree with something, and I'm not going to complain about it. It's nothing wrong with it. I understand why teams are doing it, but you know, there's a thing in in business called you know you negotiate in good faith. Right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. If, if Mo has a change of mind, if Mo agrees and I agree to a deal and Mo suddenly has a change of heart, I can cry wolf, but I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. So I could say, Mo, how could you do this? And you could say, BJ, how could you do this? We're negotiating in good faith. We both agree to a deal. And then all of a sudden you call it back out at the 11th hour. Well, that's how business goes. That's how it is. So I look at these expiring contracts, these transactional trades. I wouldn't do it. I don't want to be a part of it, but it is what it is. It's acceptable now. It's, it's normal behavior. And it's part of, if you're going to be in the NBA, this is the deal. So, I, you know, like to say, I can't knock the hustle. I'm not going to knock yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, but I, I just, I don't, that's not me. And that, you know, I don't know what that says about me, but that's not me. I, I just want to, if I can accept losing every game, but what I can't accept is not trying to win every game. <laughs> you. you know what I mean? It's a very different thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, hey, Mo, if you do your best, what more can I ask if you do your best? That's right. I mean, well, speaking of that though, doing your best, the Golden State Warriors, going to do their best to win an NBA championship. BJ, do you want to see something? I'll receive something. Do you want to see something? Stay right there. I'm going to show you something. Sure. For everyone who watches on, who listens on audio and doesn't watch on YouTube, you're not going to see what I've got. But I got this package. I got a box, which is pretty cool. And I've got a feeling BJ's not going to think it it's as cool as I do. But uh came wrapped in some nice tissue. Came with a little message. Hi, Hoop Genius. Congratulations on celebrating the 75th anniversary of the finals. Blah 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 blah. Here's what we have. Oh. Victory goggles. These are the goggles that the winning team of the NBA finals. Is going to be wearing oh, yeah. <laughs> when they celebrate in the locker room. You know, Mo, can I tell you something? Can I tell you a funny story? Those are really, really cool. I like those. Go ahead. So, Mo, I, I um, Michael had a deal with a uh, sunglass company. It was uh, Oakley. Oakley. I pitched to Oakley making some championship goggles. This is like 25, <laughs> 30 years ago. <laughs> and, and they and they looked at me like this, Mo. They looked at me like, this guy is absolutely crazy. This guy's well, nuts. <laughs> and to see that ball, and so I was reminded of that. Of that. So, those are really cool though. So those Matador really Projects, cool. a sunglasses company from Australia, have actually picked this up. The first exclusive collaboration with the NBA and ESPN. And um be sure to flex and show some love on Instagram. Oh, can we can, can we get these guys? To, can we get these guys in honor of someone should have been promoting this a long time ago? We should be celebrating on the podcast. So I need those glasses. These goggles for the podcast. 
I need the goggles for the for the podcast because we're just celebrating. All right, I'm gonna get you some. I'm gonna let them know. I'm gonna let them know. And if you guys listen on audio and have no idea what we're talking about, check out the Hoop Genius podcast on YouTube and subscribe while you're there. And you can see me wearing championship goggles, which I will be taking with me just in case I end up in a locker room celebration. You never know where you can end up in this world. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, who knows? It might be the Warriors celebrating in game six. It might be the Boston Celtics celebrating in game seven. All I know is that we celebrate every day the fact that you guys tune in and listen to us. And because we love you guys so much, we have an exclusive interview with Otto Porter Jr. that you're now going to be able to listen to. We spoke about the NBA Finals and all those kind of good things. So make sure that you subscribe, leave a comment, leave a ring, leave a review. You know, I'll tell you guys every day. Um, but we appreciate you rocking with us. Enjoy game six. I will be very stressed. BJ will be very relaxed. And um, if you don't hear a podcast after that, just know I'm very depressed at the Boston Celtics. But... <laughs> I will be on regardless, Mo or not. I will be on. Well, I can't because Mo, Mo knows all the technology. But I will. I, I promise people I will take regardless. We'll get I'll, it out I'll, I'll set it up. BJ, I'll give you the 30-minute monologue while I sit here crying about the Celtics. Okay? Mm-hmm. We'll get it out for you. But anyway, appreciate you guys. BJ, appreciate you. Good to see you get home safely. And um, all right, until my next time. Get Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined by the one and only Mr. Otto Porter Jr. How you doing, my man? You good? Yes, sir. All right, so you stepped into the starting lineup in a previous mm-hmm. game, a little bit of a change, wanted to go with a bit of a faster pace. What was Coach Kerr's message to you before starting that game there? Uh, just a task at hand. Um, the game plan, what we wanted to do, uh, just come in and play my game, really. What was it like playing in front of that Boston Garden crowd where you know the fans can get a little crazy? Yeah, I played in front of that crowd before in the playoffs, and it's it's everything about playoff, you know, basketball, uh, hostile like that. Uh, it's pretty fun to play in front of a crowd like that. Now, in game four, Steph Curry put on an all-time great finals performance. Mm-hmm. What's it like watching Steph do that to a team? As his teammate from someone having that perspective on the court? Uh, it's amazing to sit there and watch it or setting screens for him while he's got it going. It's, it's amazing because we know any chance you get, uh, uh, daylight, you know, you know, every shot we think is going in. So uh, it's our job to go out there when he got it going like that is to keep him rolling, you know, keep keep uh, getting him open looks, you know, uh, make it easier for him. Now, a lot has been spoken about the Celtics electing to play the drop coverage, not trying to trap Steph on a lot of these possessions. What do you make of their decision to do that? Uh, I mean, whatever they decide to do, we have a counter to it. So if they don't want to trap him, then he's he's going to uh, continue to be stuff. And if they do trap him, we still find ways to get back back to him. So, um, you know, it's interesting what they're trying to do. Now, on the other end of the court, you guys have done a good job on Jason Tatum, really limiting him. You know, we saw him explode for huge performances in that mm-hmm. Milwaukee series, in the Brooklyn series, Miami series. Mm-hmm. We're still waiting to see Jason Tatum do that here ahead of Game 5. But mm-hmm. what have you guys done? defending him that's been so successful? Uh, we, we've, Andrew's done an amazing job on him. Uh, he's been assigned to him, but you know, we, it's a team effort uh, to, to make it uncomfortable for him, to get him off his spots, uh, to make every dribble hand off, every screen hard for him, and make it tough. And that goes for Jalen Brown too. Now, in the off season, it was reported that you turned down more money. You were offered a mid-level exception elsewhere to sign here in Golden State. I don't know if that's true or not, if you can shed some light on that being true, but I what don't made, know anything about that. <laughs> what made Golden State such an attractive destination for you to sign in the offseason? Uh, I mean, it just made sense for me. It just made sense uh, to play for organizations of the style that I played growing up um, and the culture here. I mean, they, ha- they have a dynasty here that, you know, they play the right way, winning mentality, championship pedigree. Um, as the stars align for me. When you say play the right way, can you give us a little bit more insight into what you mean by playing the right way? You're talking on the defensive end or the offensive system that gets so much attention. Which elements of the Warriors style of play jump out to you? This is everything. Offense and defense. You know, they fly around. Um, guys are, are lifting each other up. You know, and that's hard to come by. Now, before the season began, a lot of people in the media especially, they didn't have the Warriors high on their board of teams that would make it out of the Western Conference. How much did that motivate you guys to not be sitting up there with maybe like the Lakers, who a lot of people thought would make the run to the finals? Uh, I don't think we really cared so much what everybody else was saying. We knew um, from day one of how special our group could be. And we all had the same mind. 
goal in mind, which was to get the championship. So we don't really care about the outside noise. We know what we bring to the table every day. You guys have done a great job and a very tough job, a rare job of mixing the young talent with the established veterans and making a run mm -hmm. to the finals. We've seen mm -hmm. guys like Jordan Poole make huge contributions. Also, Kaminga mm -hmm. Moody, they've stepped up in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. How has that been trying to balance that in the locker room and what advice have you given to those younger players? Yeah, like you said, veteran guys, you know, um, plays a big part in developing, especially younger guys that have never been to the playoffs or never been to the NBA Finals. It just helps that much more uh, for the young guys. And, and, and they're smart to where they listen and absorb all the context and all the information that's passed down to them. So, um, you know, it's, it goes both ways, you know, and, and it helped all year for our young guys. You know, they've been preparing for this moment since day one. Now, Draymond Green's had a little bit of criticism over the course of this series for his podcast, first of all, which is a bit crazy, but his play on the court and his lack of willingness to score the basketball. Why do you think that is? Because, you know, it does make sense when he says if he can get Steph Curry a shot rather than him taking a shot himself. But do you think it would help if he was more aggressive in attacking at the basket? I mean, he's going to continue to be aggressive and attack when he's when he can. I mean, but 30 got it going. We're trying to get screens for him. Very mind, he's going to shoot the ball when he's open. You know that. He's going to take his shots. He's going to be aggressive when he wants to be aggressive. You know, um, we're not worried about him at all. We know he's going to show up and perform uh, every game. Now, for the Celtics, Al Horford and Rob Williams have been huge in their playoff run. Can you speak to how much of an impact uh, Kevon Looney has had in this series as well? Yeah, boy, man, he's been controlling the paint for us, uh, especially dealing with Rob Williams' size and Al Horford's size in the paint, um, with Andrew Wiggins helping on the boards too. Um, and like I said, Looney's just been holding us down in the paint all year, all year. Do you, you know? have a favorite one of the memes? Because we've seen all the Hakeem Alouni one, Kevon Abdul-Jabbar. Loon told me his favorite was Moses Maluni. Have you got a favorite one that you've seen? Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't seen any of them. Private to Moses Maluni. That sounds funny. <laughs> so I like that one. So what's the mood of, of the team going into this game five and how confident are you guys head forwards? Uh, must win for us. Um, you know, we know what's at, at stake here at home, protect home court, but it's also a must win for us. Now, of course, if you handle business in game five, you're on the road for game six. Game six clay is known all around the world, goes down in basketball history as one of the most best players of all time. Mm -hmm. Do you guys ever speak about that throughout the year, throughout the playoffs? No, no, not at all. You, you just, what's, what's it like with Clay? Because we've heard so much about his mentality of just being such an easygoing guy, but when it comes to the work, he's so locked in. What's he like on the Clay's day Clay's been locked in every, every day. I mean, every day since he got back. So um, it just started with his off-season work. And we know what he's capable of doing. Um, any big game. It can be game five, six, or seven. We know that he's capable of, of, of having a really, really good game. Now, with Clay Thompson, how much does it mean, given everything he's been through, and we saw his return, and how special that, if you guys are to go on and win this, how much extra meaning would that have for Clay just through every injury that oh, he's Tom been through? Oh, Tom Sin, Tom Sin, Tom Sin, because nobody knew, can understand what he went through. Um, going through two significant injuries like that and to come back and win the NBA championship, I mean, it's probably going to mean the world to him, for sure. Now, we're here, you know, getting ready for the NBA Finals. If you could have been courtside for any game, any NBA Finals in NBA history, where would you have wanted to be? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I'll probably say the last championship MJ won, 98. No, yeah, with the Bulls. Is that so? When you were growing up, who did you look at to take inspiration for your game? Uh, Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, Vince Carter. There's so many guys that I grew up idolizing and trying to be like. So, um, those are just a few. Just a few. See, now on our show back in the UK called Heat Check, we ask everyone who comes on to give us their all time starting five. Who's that for you? All time starting five? Mm -hmm. Ah man, Jesus. MJ for sure. Will Magic. Larry Bird. You got uh, one more. I'm forgetting somebody. I'll probably say Shaq. Shaq, ah, that's yeah. a big big five. But anyway, Otto, we appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. Best of luck for game five and for the rest of the NBA finals and Hopefully we'll see you soon. Appreciate it.